so the former leader of game changers duduzani zuma is back doing the media interviews and i don't know guys man for some weird reason <laughs> i actually enjoy watching duduzani zuma's interviews just like with judas maleba or figle mbalula i enjoy watching these people's interviews i may not agree with everything they say on these interviews but i find their interviews to be interesting and entertaining this is the reason why i'm always locked in <laughs> when these people are interviewed so we know that duduzani zuma had his own political party the game changers and the party was set to contest for the presidential elections but iec said no 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 we are not going to allow you to do that so the political party was pushed aside and duduzani zuma could not contest for the presidential elections and again personally i wanted to see how duduzani zuma was going to do in the elections so considering that he is the son of the former president jacob zuma and zuma is quite popular himself so i wanted to see how duduzani zuma was going to do in the elections and iec said no this is not the match that you are going to watch right now so recently duduzani zuma was at wide awake podcast and this segment that we are going to focus on today guys this is a very important segment because it has to do with the unity in the country it has to do with race and how possible is it for south africans to actually work together do you, do you think south africans can ever work together like do you think there's a future where people from different races different cultures different backgrounds work together 100% right? yes and sir and the reason i'm saying this is because i went to oranya recently yeah, and i saw that the us stridum who is the like ceo i guess they call yeah. him of oranya yeah. said that he doesn't believe that and of course he would probably say this <laughs> but he doesn't believe that like the zulu people uh white people Uh, the Khoisan, like all, all these, there's, he said there's way too many different cultures and backgrounds and histories and lineages in yeah. South Africa for the country to ever operate as one, yeah. right? I, I don't believe that. Yeah. I don't believe that. I think people can always work together. We just sure. look for reasons to yeah. divide yeah. ourselves. But um, yeah, I mean, do you think it is possible for one day there to be a government that is cohesive, a people that is cohesive? and how do we get there i mean before i allow duduzani zuma to actually answer the question um me personally of course i believe that south africans from all races they can work together and at the same time i understand why some people are saying that south africans cannot work together i'm not going to speak on behalf of the ceo of orania i'm only going to speak of what i think i believe that one of the reasons why many people have actually formed a position that we in the country cannot work together is because of the racial divide that has been pushed by the politics and the political party and the politicians in this country we know that every day the politicians are doing everything in their power to make sure that the people are divided so i am not surprised when some people are saying that now nah, i don't think that the country can work together mainly because of the rhetoric that is coming out of the politicians and this rhetoric is being adopted by the people on the ground i mean for an example recently we learned about what happened on the n3 highway where people were stuck because of the snow and we also learned about the farmers who took their tractors to actually go to that place to help those people to find a way and to be honest the majority of the people that were stuck in that highway are black people so we saw some of the white farmers taking their tractors their resources going to that place to actually help those people but if you go online there are people that are finding fault with the fact that some of the white farmers took their resources to go to that place and help majority of black people that were actually stuck on the entry highway so this is what the politics has actually done to us 
we are now at a position where even when someone is doing something good, there are people who are going to find fault with that good that has actually been done. So I agree that the people in the country can actually work together. But I am not surprised that other people have actually formed a position that in this country we cannot work together. I believe that most of it, it has to do with the political rhetoric that is coming out of these politicians. These politicians doing everything in their power to actually divide the people of this country. I mean, even when the Springboks has won, you will see the people on the townships, the people who hardly watch rugby, you will see them celebrating because the national team has won. But you go online, you go on social media, you will find the politicians, you will find their Asians actually working hard to actually remind the people that you cannot celebrate this because we are different. You cannot celebrate this because we have to be divided. So I believe that in the country today, the politicians in this country have actually adopted a strategy to actually divide the people so that they can conquer the people. So this is why it's happening. So personally, again, I agree that the people in the country can work together. But at the same time, I am not surprised why some people are taking the position that in this country we cannot work together. And I am not speaking on behalf of the CEO of Orania. The CEO of Orania, he has his own reasons why he believes that in the country we cannot work together. Like the guy has already stated, he doesn't believe that the Zulus and the Afrikaners, there are too many cultures. Maybe that's his own reasons. I, I do not speak on, on his behalf. But again, I understand why some people have actually came up with the reasons to believe that in the country we cannot work together is because of the racial divide that has been pushed by politicians. So I know for a fact that many political parties in this country cannot survive if they don't push the racial divide. Many political parties and many politicians would not be here if it's not for this rhetoric that has been sustainable to, towards them for the longest time. So I believe that we can work together. But again, I understand why some people believe that we cannot work together. Maybe some people have already tried to work together and they've actually realized that, nah, this is not going to work for us because as much as we are trying our level best to working with others, there are always people outside demonizing us for actually working with other people. So we are not going to work with them. I'm simply going to work with my kind. I am black. I am going to work with black people. I don't want anything to do with white people. I'm an Afrikaner. I'm working with Afrikaners. I don't want anything to do with white people. I don't want anything to do with the Indians. And I don't want anything to do with the black people. Because even if I extend my hand and work with the other people, there are people that are going to demonize me for actually working with the other people. So I believe that we can work together. But the politics in this country, they have actually destroyed us saying this is because i went to orania recently yeah, and i saw that the u.s stridum who is the like ceo i guess they call yeah. him of orania yeah. said that he doesn't believe that and of course he would probably say this <laughs> but he doesn't believe that like the zulu people uh white people uh, the khoisan like all, all these this he said this way too many different cultures and backgrounds and histories and lineages in yeah. south africa for the country to ever operate as one, yeah. right? I, I don't believe that. Yeah. I don't believe that. I think people can always work together. We just sure. look for reasons to yeah. divide ourselves. But um, yeah, I mean, do you think it is possible for one day there to be a government that is cohesive, a people that is cohesive? And how do we get there? I, I do believe that we, we can work together. Uh, I think for the major part, we are working together. You know, mm -hmm. if you look at... Um, our society in general. I mean, it's integrated quite fantastically. Do we have issues? Yes. So I always, I always speak about the, 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 the dangers to, to us not working together. And I'll put it, I always put, I put it in the order of uh, chronologically three to one. Um, the third one being um, a racism, right? So the whole racism issue in our country that's existed, that's been part of what our colonial past was and, 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 and that story, you know, and more, it's, 
there's a black-white issue. We've seen Indian black issues in certain parts of the country, like um, uh, the KwaZulu-Natal province. Um, there's certain issues of, of racism that have to be dealt with. Um, it's, it's unfortunate that we're still having these conversations in this day and age, but it's there, you know, and we need to acknowledge that it's there, unfortunately. Is it everyone? No, it's not everyone. It's a, a, a certain number of people that I, I, I honestly believe is, is on the, the low, lower number of, of, of the scale than, than the higher number. So it's, it's, a, it's a fixable problem. And all these issues stem from upbringing, as we know. So you don't just wake, you don't just rock up and, and start disrespecting mm. people based on the color of their skin. No, it's something that you've brought up, been brought up in, which speaks to where you're from. Those issues need to be dealt with. Number two would be... And, and Duduzano Zuma is raising a very important point, saying that what Duduzano Zuma, in my own understanding, what he's saying is that in our races, all of us, I mean, there are black people who are not okay. There are white people that are bad. There are Indians that are bad. There are Africaners that are bad. But it is dangerous for us to actually generalize, which is something that has been done over the years. If a one Indian person does a horrible thing towards a black person, then suddenly all Indians are bad. Forgetting that, okay, it, it, like it, it was that guy who has actually done a horrible thing towards that person. So it is dangerous for us to actually generalize, especially when we deal with these matters, because it's making a lot of people form resentment towards other races and without valid reasons without valid reasons so i think that duzani zuma is trying to make a point that all of us there are bad people in all our races there is not a single race that is perfect there are bad people in all of our races but at the same time we have to deal with the fact that these people do not represent the entire race just because a couple of black people have done horrible things it doesn't mean that all black people are bad we we, we cannot be we cannot operate like that we need to acknowledge that okay these are the people that have done horrible things and these are people that need to be dealt with but we cannot say that just because a one person has done a horrible thing or a couple of people have done horrible things it doesn't mean that the entire race is horrible I think it is very dangerous and unfortunately this is the position that we have taken as South Africans. This is where we are right now. We are just looking and waiting for a one person to do a horrible thing and before you even know it, the entire race is now insulted or is now, people are saying now all of those people are bad simply because of actions of few, of few people. We just need to accept that there are people that are bad in all our races, but it doesn't mean that those people, they represent the entire races. Tribalism. And I think that's what um, the, the CEO of Rani would be speaking about. Mm. Um, and tribalism in South Africa speaks to the black on black issue. So that is Zulus, Klosas, Vendas, Tswanas, mm. um, the different parts of the country, how we exist in these different parts of the countries, how we feel that these places are ours and no one else's. Um, you're welcome to come. It's a weird mindset that it's, it's, I think. It's, it's, but I mean, that's, 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 that's what the world has been. It's not mm. just South Africa. I no, mean, it's everywhere. You're yeah. seeing what's happening in different parts of the world. It's, you know, it's starting, to, it's, it's rearing its, its ugly head, you know, so that's, that's human nature. Mm. But it's something that needs to be dealt with and overcome. We, we have to get along, you know, you know, Amongst black people, I, I definitely place um, the issue of black on black problems. Mm. I'll definitely, like I said, I've got it at number two, racism at number three, um, and how that fits into how our country is structured, how our economy has become um, structured. You know, we need to get as black people, we need to get our story straight before we start going out there and, and trying to sort other other people's problems out. Um, and then number one would be and. Again, man, Duduzadu Zuma is raising a very important point, especially me, I would speak on my behalf, me as a black person, I believe that tribalism is dangerous and this is an issue that is not talked about enough. This is something that is not talked about enough. You remember in the elections, 
there was a video of that guy in Gizo Mkunu actually saying that Julius Malema is not welcome in KwaZulu Natal because Julius Malema is from Limpopo and they are from KwaZulu Natal and they are not going to allow a person who comes from Limpopo to go to KwaZulu Natal to try to campaign in KwaZulu Natal. I mean, all of us were actually disgusted, but it is said that this issue of tribalism this is something that is not being discussed a lot if you came from another country you would think that the, the only the only issue that we are dealing with as the people of this country is the issue of racism but at the same time the people that are trying to push hard on this issue of racism are ignoring the fact that black people are killing each other Black people, they hate each other. The Kosas, the, the Zulus, some of these people, they do not get along. And not for valid reasons, simply because these people belong to different tribes. And I believe that it's quite dangerous. I believe it's dangerous. I once lived in Johannesburg and I saw what tri tribalism and how dangerous tribalism is. The people that are similar with you, they are black like you, but they can hate you on an instant, by simply learning that you belong to a different tribe. And it is quite dangerous. And this is something that is not being discussed a lot in our political discourse. This is not something that has been discussed a lot in our political discourse. So tribalism is very dangerous. It's very dangerous, man. Very. The xenophobia issue. Um, so now it is... The, the the hate for foreigners or the dislike so hate is a strong word the dislike for foreigners okay this is our country um you're not welcome here because you're not from here you know um i think that's short-sighted that's definitely something that um shouldn't happen <coughs> we live in a in a in a very um integrated mm. world you know um the issues of immigration 100 percent if you're Paperwork is not in order. You shouldn't be here. That's a no-brainer. That's anywhere. That's though. that's anywhere I mean, in the just world. An, yeah. You know, when that's when everywhere. when we travel, it's you know wherever in the world I am, I make sure my green mamba is on me, just in case I get uh, sorry uh, uh, my passport. Your green mamba. Yeah, the green mamba. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I know so, what you're doing. Yeah, right yeah. <laughs> sorry, the green mamba is a passport. Um, you mentioned it at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. So and and the reason for that is at any point if you're stopped in a at a restaurant. Um, at a club, um, at a museum, um, at a uh, uh, railway, uh, an, an underground um, mm. terminal for the railway station. You need to be able to say, this is my passport, this is my whatever it is, um, visa, my work visa, my visit visa, my um, work permit, whatever it is that you, whatever reason you're there for, um, it is that you're there for. And it's, 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 it's not even a discussion. Sorry, sir, who are you? I'm so-and-so. Mm. Can we see some identification here? Okay. Cool. Have a nice day. That's a no-brainer. And we expect that in South Africa mm. as well. If you do not have the requisite documentation, you should not be here. That's not xenophobic. And uh, of course, it is not xenophobic. And this is the only thing that many South Africans are actually asking for. Of course, there are people that are xenophobic. There are people that simply hate other people because those people do not come from South Africa. But when it has to do with this issue of xenophobic or, or of xenophobia, majority of South Africans are simply saying that we don't have a problem with people coming from other places. We don't have pe we don't have a problem with people living in South Africa, but we simply want these people to enter into the country with proper documentations. And what has come from the politics and the mainstream media is to label South Africans as xenophobic for simply saying that. We want people to get into the country with the proper documentations. Because some of these people are committing heinous crimes and they cannot be tracked down because they entered the country, they jumped the borders to come into the country. So the politicians in this country and the mainstream media, they have decided to label everyone who actually talks about this issue as xenophobic. And I believe that it is quite dangerous because now, it is making South Africans or it is pushing South Africans to be resentful towards the foreigners. They didn't have a problem with the foreigners, but today it's simply because they say they don't want people to jump the borders to get into the country. They are labeled as xenophobic. Now they are angry at all foreigners.
They are angry at all foreigners. So this is something that has been pushed by politicians. This is something that has been pushed by the mainstream media by labeling South Africans as xenophobic for simply expressing their frustrations about some of the crimes that are committed in their own townships or in their own neighborhoods by these people that come outside of the country. So this issue of xenophobia, I, be, I, I agree that there are people that are xenophobic. There are people that hate other people simply because those people, they do not come from South Africa. But majority of the people, I believe, I do not have the facts, I do not have the statistics, but I believe that majority of the people, they simply want the people to get into the country with the proper documentations so that we can know who these people are. It is dangerous for us right now. It is dangerous for a lot of people right now because they don't know that I could be killed. My family member could be killed. And the police will say, that guy, we've ran the test. And unfortunately, we don't know who this person is. And a lot of families have actually faced that kind of situation where they are told that this person who has murdered your loved ones, we cannot find them because we don't know who this person is. Maybe this person comes outside of South Africa. And these are the dangers that South Africans are actually speaking about. But the elites in the country, the people that are living in the gated communities, the politicians, the mainstream media executives, they are labeling South Africans as xenophobic for simply expressing their frustrations about what these people do. And when you look at the reality, these people that are jumping the borders and getting into the country, they, are, they do not live with these politicians. These politicians, they live in the gated communities. These media executives, they live in the suburbs. They live far from average South Africans. And these are the people that are encouraging the people to jump the borders to get into the country and labeling everyone who talks about that as xenophobic. It is quite sad, man. It is quite sad. That is abiding by the law. Just like when we go into everyone else's country, when we travel to, um, into, into other African states, other European mm. states, um, Asian, yeah. um, we make sure we have the right documents. Yeah, you know, of course. You yeah. know. So I think, and I rate that at, at, at number one, because if you look at what's happening amongst our communities, um, rural townships, it's, it's a ticking time bomb. Not because I'm saying it, we've seen it. The first um, skirmishes were, let's call it 2008, that would started becoming... Um, um, prevalent was uh, in 2008. Then it became progressively worse, I think, 20, 2013, 2014. And then we, we're here now. Mm. I mean, it's starting to play out in, 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 in the arts space and we're seeing what's happening now with, with um, the beauty pageants and stuff. So we, are, we have these things happening all the time. But that being said, I firmly believe that we can work together. We need to be able to learn from each other. So I've never been to Aranya. Um, you've had the, the good fortune of going to check it out because I like I like commenting on 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 things that I've seen or I've, I've experienced. Mm. You know, it's easy to talk about places or things that we haven't experienced and have an opinion on it. You know, yeah. um, you can because you've been there, and you've interacted, and you've you've walked the ground, and you can mm. be like, okay, this is what I saw, this is how I felt, blah blah blah. Um, but this is what I will say uh, in response to 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 who you met, what was said, mm. and then your your. Um, your viewpoint on it. First time in my life, I went to the Fort Trekker Monument, which is in Pretoria, was about two years ago. Driven past that monument a gazillion times. And that day, I was in between meetings. And I'm like, hey, hold on one second. Why haven't I been in this building? Mm -hmm. You know, um, went in. It happened to be a quiet day. I forget the gentleman's name that was there. He was a tour guide, and he. I actually need to go back to see him. He, he did me a solid, he proper took me through a, I feel like it was, he did, he went beyond the call of duty. You know, I think he was trying to convert me to, to become an African. I don't know what was going on. But um, no, he proper spent time with me and he took me through, um, you know, there's a, up the stairs into, there's that auditorium type section. Yeah, I'm not sure if you've been, uh, mm -hmm. you need to check it out. It's 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 proper. You know, and people say, ah, oh, but what were you doing there? That is the, the bastion of what... Um, um, colonialism, colonialism was and apartheid and all of that and I'm like guys it's history it's a monument go check what it's about go learn um, why there's a certain viewpoint um, how people got here because we all got here somehow 
you know, that goes to all of us. Um, mm. You know, so let's let's understand that and let's learn from that. So without being too long-winded, the point I'm trying to get to is we need to learn from each other. So that visit to the monument, you know, I we've all learned history and we've come across this. We've learned in, in school, mm. but, you know, just walking through that, that, that room and it's like the history, you know, it's, it's four walls and it's, it starts off with these, uh, I don't know, what you, murals on the wall, mm. um, like carved in, and it takes you through the time of the interaction with um, the Afrikaners and um, the Shangans and then the Zulus and how they migrated to different parts of the country, mm. how they ended up in the Free State you know, on, on the way to Mozambique or wherever it is that they were going. Um, and... When you look at this, the map of South Africa, you look at, at, at how they've settled in the country, you get to understand how it happened, why they think that way, and why they're protective of, of their culture. And it's something that you have to respect. You can't want to destroy it. I think it's short-sighted to want to destroy it because if you look at where we're at in our country today, a lot of what has been placed here has been thanks to the hard work that was put in by them. Whether we like them or not, whether they suppressed us or not, a lot of the buildings that the current government sits in today, that the offices that they walk into were built by the very same guys that they're trying to 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 um, to wipe out from mm. from history. But I, I think, is, yeah, like guys, like do you hear what uh, Dudu is saying? <laughs> For simply saying that we need to learn from each other. Like people have decided to say, nah. What are you doing? Why Why would you actually suggest for us to actually learn from each other? And this is something that I've said, especially when I've covered this issue of Orania. Like one thing that I've said repeatedly is to say, guys, as much as some some people may not agree with the concept of Orania, but that that is that is not supposed to be good enough to stop you from learning from the people of Orania and what is it that these people are doing for their place to be so successful but unfortunately like this is where we are if you say that we need to learn from each other we need to be able to to learn from despite despite how we feel about the situation we need to be able to learn from each other we need to know the people will always push back as soon as you say that we need to learn from each other people will always push back they are not going to listen to you they are simply going to say no you are just pandering to these people why are you pandering to these people these people will never like you you are here and these people will never like you unfortunately again i'm going to go back to the politics and the politicians and what they have actually done this is their work this is their work at play right now the politicians they don't even have to say a word because if when some of us actually come out and say that guys maybe we need to start learning from each other the, the 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 supporters of these political parties the supporters of these politicians will come out and say that no we cannot learn from each other we, we don't even le need to learn anything from each other which is wrong which is wrong we have to learn from each other whether we like it or not and again we have a problem with people that are trying to wipe out history <laughs> and trying to stop other people from actually learning about the history there are people that are like that in the country currently there are people that are like that exactly like that they don't want south africans to actually learn about their history they don't want people to learn anything that has happened in the past if you try to do that then people are simply gonna say nah nah you you, you think that you are going to be liked by these people they are not going to like you so these are some of the real problems that we are facing right now in the country and unfortunately all of these things, they go back to what the politicians and the mainstream media has actually done in this country. The politicians and the mainstream media, for some reason, they have actually convinced the people that we just need to be divided. And at the same time, we cannot learn anything. We cannot learn anything from each other, which is completely wrong. The problem which is unfortunate. Is people try to almost dehumanize each other, yeah. right? If you're coming from a different background. Uh, in South Africa, I, I think I experience this quite a lot, where it's like, as say like a, a white guy that grew up in like a relatively privileged area, um, you might see uh, <coughs> someone do something, or let's like say you're, you go to school, right? And there's kids from, from other areas there. Um, you guys come from such different backgrounds that I think it's almost just a, a lot of the time people find it hard to relate to each other, yeah. right? Because you can't understand that perspective that of where they're coming from. True. Um, and someone like me who's grown up, like my cousin um, 
is is black. He was adopted. He was actually my uh, my auntie's housekeeper's son. Okay. And we had like the best relationship growing up since we were like two years old, oh. right? So I understand his perspective and where he comes from and the struggles that he went through, yeah. right? Being a black kid that grew up in a very impoverished area and um, also through the work I've done in the Cape Flats, like yeah. I go into the Cape Flats and I've seen the kids there and the way people live there and the struggles they go through, sure. right? So instead of seeing just like you're walking down the street, like say you're this privileged person, you come from a very sheltered background, you don't see like a street cleaner, like a say like a colored street cleaner yeah. go, uh, that's just a colored street cleaner. When I look at them now, I go like, that person probably comes from the Cape Flats. They've gone through so much in their life. Yeah. You know, you don't know where their parents were, what their parents went through. A lot of their parents probably, a lot of come from a background of addiction yeah. and displacement from the government. Sure. And, you know, all these things. So it's like, I feel like we're very quick to dehumanize each other and Most just go, definitely. oh, that's just him from whatever area, yeah. you know what I mean? Oh, he's Afrikaans guy, like place he probably him in just the box, yeah. grew up on a farm somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you kind of stereotype people and place them in a box where, when since I've started going into these areas, I've really started to understand- like, Major respect for that. The history and yeah. where people come from and how they got to these places and and what being uh, Afrikaans means, or what being a colored person means, or what being a Zulu or a Kosa person means, you know? Um, I feel like, that is a huge step South Africans need to take is just truly understanding like when your housekeeper comes to do work in the morning, where she's coming from or where uh, the guy that's coming to do the landscaping in your yard, the, the big Afrikaans guy, you know, like where he comes from, yeah. what is his story? Um, he, he's not just some Afrikaans guy that grew up on a farm, you know, it's like with our athletes is the perfect example. Yeah. You see Sia Khaleesi, the most inspirational iconic figure in South Africa probably at the moment, yeah. right? Um, comes from a township, comes from some area that from you've nothing. probably never yeah. even heard of, Correct. right? Uh, you look at Ibn Etzebeth, it's massive Afrikaans guy. You probably just look <laughs> at him and just go, ah, oh, that's just like, that's just, the, not, the like an Afrikaans guy, you know what I mean? <laughs> the memes coming out of the UFC have been killing me. <laughs> it's like, who the hell and is drink this? Okay. But you, you see yeah. these guys and like, to a lot of people, like I see in America, the way they talk about Drickers. Yeah. They go, oh, he's this Afrikaans guy, he's got a weird name. Uh, <laughs> and like, I saw a comment about him recently when Izzy hit him with a punch and the, the guy was like, oh yeah, that's for apartheid or something. You know what I mean? Like people look at things so like one dimensional. Yeah. Oh, he's Afrikaans, he's just like every other Afrikaans yeah. guy. He's Zulu, he's like just like every other Zulu guy. Of course, they are generalizing, they are generalizing. <laughs> people need to stop like, holding things, yeah. looking at one thing as one thing. You need to look at people as people and really understand where they come yeah. from and, and their backstories. No, so I, I just went on a little rant No, there. no, no, that's, that's <laughs> it's, it's, it's super key because that is the only way we're gonna overcome this. What you've said is exactly the only way we're gonna overcome this. I mean, you know. I mean like, of course that is the only way or that is how we're gonna overcome everything that is happening right now. But if you want that to happen, we just need to do a simple thing. We just need to turn our backs on politicians because these are the people that are working hard, the politicians and the mainstream. These are the people that are working hard to ensure that the South Africans do not do exactly what they are talking about. This is These are the people that are stopping South Africans from doing exactly what these people are talking about. These are the, If we want to achieve this, the only thing I can, I, I can tell you right now the only thing that we need to get rid of let's let's just let's just get rid of these politicians let's just get rid of these political parties let's just get rid of the mainstream media and the narrative that is coming out of the mainstream media and the politicians and i can tell you today that the south africans will be so open towards each other but the politicians have actually made sure that the south africans will always generalize when they look at each other which is something that is wrong no, I mean, he's not here at the moment, but I mean, Jared, I'm not mentioning his name, he's gonna be pissed off, but... I'll bleep it, it's fine. No, 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 it's fine, it's, it's cool, he's, he's cool with it, but... Um, that is a brother of mine, like proper, proper, one of the closest people I have to me, mm -hmm. you know. Um, people may not expect it for whatever, but we've been, we've been through the fire for some time, for a long time together, you know, so he's, he's, he's super, super key, someone that I... I I hold in high regards and, and I respect dearly, 
you know, and he's from a completely different background. Mm. And we've had these discussions, and it's one of those things where we get to 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 understand. It's like, for example, um, so one of the times where there was one of the huge um, xenophobic flare-ups, we're in um, Melrose, Johannesburg. We just eaten had something to eat at places called the Shisanyama, one of the Shisanyama mm. um, franchises. So it's overlooking, it's on the other side of Kola Drive, opposite Melrose Arch. So as we, we walk out, and literally when we're, we're having dinner, we're getting these updates on our phones and it's happening in Alexandra, which is not the township that is, mm. which is not too far from there. So we're having the conversation and, and he's concerned and he's like, hey, what's, what's going on? And he's trying to understand what the situation is. And there comes a gentleman, happens to be a Mozambican gentleman. He's like, hey, can you please help me? I've been attacked. And at this point, it's like, hey, what, what are you talking about? Because, you know, I just thought it was someone trying to hustle and I'm like, hey, mate, don't try to hustle me. Mm. <laughs> what are you talking about? Then he took his... Don't knocker. hustle a hustler. Yeah, he took, his, he took his hoodie off and his um, his elbow and with the bones just like literally sticking, sticking out, out of his... We're like, what's going on? He's like, no, he was he was just attacked and he doesn't know what to do. He's starting, and you can see his energy starting to, 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 to get depleted and it's like, bro... You need to get some help, you know, and then someone had offered him a, a, a ride to get him to hospital, but he didn't have money. So whatever we had on us, we we're like, bro, here you go. Mm. Um, sort yourself out. So when we're having a, a conversation at that time, um, that was like 2014, maybe 2013, 14. He's like, but wh- how is this happening? Why is this happening? Um, you know, as much as there's issues, but why, why are people getting attacked? And it's questions that we all ask, but he was asking me at this point. And I said, you need to understand the dynamic of, and it's uh, linking into what you, you, just, you just said, which was not a rant, which was key. We're living in a very traumatic society. It's been traumatized by the history of the country. It's been traumatized by the freedoms of the country, meaning there was, you know, people call it the dream deferred. <laughs> there was a time where everyone was subjugated because of, of, of um, the racial dynamic and uh, people that were more privileged than whatever it is. Post-94, you have a new government, it's a new time, it's freedom, but people feel equally, at some points, more let down by the new government than what was the, 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 the older government, and people have certain commentary around that. So now what happens is people are like, hey, you are our people, you are representing us, we put you there to represent us, but why isn't there um, a, um, a change in our lives? You know, there's um, an, an old saying that goes, the, I was trying to recall it now, the, the, the collective intelligence of a people is greater than that of its leadership, meaning, as much as leaders are put into place and they try and bamboozle us and mislead us, not all of them, but a lot of them in this yeah. case, people will always remind you what the reality is just based on mm. their collective and, and, and um, their collective experiences. So as an example, if you look at people revolting and attacking foreigners, legal or illegal in a sense what they're telling government is government we're not happy with your immigration laws that's all they're saying mm. you know they're using they, they they're doing it in this messed up manner but that's basically what they're saying and that doesn't just go for south africa you look at what's happening in the uk it's happening in america it's it happens happening in the us it happens so everywhere. the collective intelligence people are saying okay this is how we feel um this is what we need done you guys are not doing it so we're going to take um, this fight, um, we're going to take this fight up and we're going to take it into our own hands. So the collective intelligence of a people is greater than that of its leadership. And that's something that we can never, ever, ever forget. Mm. Because at <clears throat> any point, when the people revolt, that's basically them saying... We're unhappy with something. Yeah, that's, that's all it is. And now what happens in South Africa is, you know, there's places in, in, in the world where people will protest. And you know, it'll be peaceful placards, they'll say their piece, they'll have the loud hailers, there might be one or two skirmishes, a little tear gas, one or two people get arrested. In South Africa, it's going to be violent. Mm. Because I've been in the middle of it a lot yeah, of times. Yeah, as yeah, well. 100%. <laughs> yeah. and, and it's because that's all people know. 
Guys, you're not listening to us when we speak, when we march, we hand over memorand- memorandums. So we're going to war. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Okay, let's burn something. Let's burn a few cars. Okay, there's a library, there's a hospital. Never mind later when the cops kick us in our backsides, we'll need to come back to the same hospital that won't be here. Um, but people don't think that far, you know. But so, people also look at that and go, oh, they're just toy toying or yeah. they're just, they're oh, just, they're they just rioting. No, but you don't look at the history of the history how they of ended it. up there and why they're doing it. And as you said, you have um, your family member that is doesn't look like you, that doesn't have the same background as you, but he's your brother. Um, you look at the places that you've been to, people in any, wherever in the country you live, you, you, live, you jump into your vehicle, you drive in any direction. 20 minutes is too far. You will come across a township that's in squalor or um, an informal settlement. Mm-hmm. So you don't need to go read about it and just take a drive through and see what's happening and you'll definitely change your mind. On but a, I encourage you to stop yeah. and talk to them as well. You have to. Because it's like it's mind blowing to me. Like, And I have say this to, so to, often, but like whenever I speak to people, I... I often don't explain things, but it, because I just expect them to know as well. Like I expect when someone sees a homeless guy struggling on the side of the road to stop and like yep. actually figure out what's going on, yep. you know, or an informal settlement, you go like, you know, I live in like one of the most beautiful cities on earth. Yep. And in the middle, there's just like people living on the streets everywhere. It's right. Strange. You would think people would be interested to go like, how does that happen? Let me go talk to these people. Where do they come from? You know what I mean? Because it's, I see like in C point, it's such a, it's such a big thing where, uh, everyone wants to get rid of the homeless people. But it's just like, where do you put them? Yeah. Why are you speaking about getting rid of them? Speak about the solutions Absolutely. so that they're not there in the that first place. That is the key. Because otherwise they're just going to come back. Right now, most people in, 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 our, in our spectacular government do not have solutions. It's all theory. And that is a problem. Of course. <laughs> of course, they don't have the solutions. This is the reason why they don't talk about the issues that are affected the people and how they can actually come with the solutions to fix these problems that are plaguing the people. They do not have the solutions. They don't have the solutions. That's why it is so easy for the politicians and the, for the political parties to come and divide the people and to remind the people that they are divided and to obsess over the racial matters instead of just coming up with the ways of that guys, this is what we are going to do to actually make sure that people have jobs. They don't, they don't, they don't even talk about the, the, the job creation anymore. Why? Because as long as they, they, they keep fueling the racial divide, they know that the people will be distracted. They will be distracted to even knowing that, guys, where, where are you about that issue of job creation? Guys, so what did you think about this conversation between Dudu Zuma and the host of the Wide Awake podcast. I think it's a very important issue. And Dudu Zuma, to his credit, he actually raised a very important point. We need to learn from each other. Guys, please tell me what you think in the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button. And the most important part, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. My name is Thomas Mabaso. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.